Organic painted pottery is a unique and somewhat mysterious phenomenon within traditional Southwestern pottery. It has been made here for hundreds of years in an unbroken line right down to today, and yet it is still not fully understood. Today I will explore the most common traditional source of organic pottery paint, the Rocky Mountain Bee Plant. The truth is, we don't know what the ancients painted on their pottery to make these carbon black designs. Some archaeologists have tried analyzing the designs on ancient sherds to find out exactly what material was used, but all they could determine was it was carbon based. Although there are many different traditions within the ancient Southwest that used organic pottery paint to make black designs on their pottery, most of these traditions died out long before our modern age and so we have no idea what they were using for their organic pottery paint. The only native southwestern groups that made organic pottery paint clear down to our day are the Pueblos along the Rio Grande. San Ildefonso, Cochiti, and Santa Domingo Pueblos all historically made organic painted pottery. And these groups made their paint or continue to make that paint using Rocky Mountain Bee Plant. According to the United States Forest Service website, one of the showiest wildflowers in the western and prairie regions of the United States is the beautiful pink-flowered Rocky Mountain bee plant. Often found along dry roadsides and waste places, this annual herb can grow up to four feet tall. It has an unpleasant odor and is mostly avoided by livestock. The nectar-filled blossoms attract a diverse array of pollinators, including bees, butterflies, and wasps. Rocky Mountain bee plant can be found throughout Western North America, from Southern British Columbia, east to Minnesota, and as far south as Arizona and New Mexico. Many native groups would boil the greens of the Rocky Mountain bee plant and eat them, which is why sometimes if you talk to native potters and ask them about their pottery paint, they'll describe it as made out of spinach or wild spinach, because that's what the bee plant is to them, although it is not actually related to the spinach plant. So I recently ran out of the pottery paint that I was selling on my website, which was made out of mesquite beans. So today I'm going to work at making a new batch of pottery paint using Rocky Mountain Bee Plant. And so I'll bring you along and show you the process as I turn this Rocky Mountain Bee Plant into pottery paint. And while I do that, I'll talk to you a little bit about this plant, how it was used historically, and what it means for reproducing authentic ancient pottery. My friend Angela collected me a whole bunch of Rocky Mountain bee plant, I think two years ago in Colorado and brought it to me. And it's been sitting here dry in Ziploc bags this whole time. This is the nice thing about Rocky Mountain bee plant. If you don't have time to process it when you harvest it, you can dry it and use it whenever you do have the time. So here I am two years later and I'm still going to be able to make bee plant paint out of this old two year old bee plant. So the first step is going to be to take this material stick it into a big pot, cover it with water, and just boil it for a while. So the first thing you need to know is that Rocky Mountain bee plant doesn't smell so good, at least to some people. I kind of like the smell, it doesn't bother me a bit, but some people have complained that it stinks, and some people have said it makes their families unhappy. So you might be wise, if you are going to cook some of this down, to do it outdoors where it won't stink your house up. So I'm going to set up a little cook stove here on my workbench, put these in a pot, and start this cooking down. Okay, so this first step is real easy. Just let it sit here and cook for a while. We're trying to rehydrate those stems and leaves and just kind of get the juices out of them. So we want to cook it for at least a couple of hours. Once it's cooked down till it's soft and you have a lot of those juices in the water, you've got a strong tea essentially, you can strain out the solids and then cook it down. So I'm going to go do my thing and let this cook for a while and then come back. In the meantime, let me tell you what Anna O. Shepard, who wrote the famous book Ceramics for the Archaeologist, had to say about bee plant. Carbon paint is common on the black on white pottery of certain parts of the Pueblo area, from basket maker three times to the present. The technique of present day Pueblo pottery of the Rio Grande Valley, who use organic paint, is well known. By proper choice of slip and short firing, 
the paint is charred without burning out, resulting in a uniform satiny black. The Rocky Mountain bee plant does not possess exceptional or peculiar properties that make it suitable for a ceramic paint. Any plant extract or other organic substance that will char will produce the same effect. So as Anna Shepard says, almost any plant will work. Still, my desire to make the most authentic replicas possible makes me wonder what the ancient potters were actually using. Most places where organic paint was historically made are also places where Rocky Mountain bee plant naturally grows. But that's not always the case. There are a few places, such as here in Tucson where I live, where organic painted pottery was made and Rocky Mountain bee plant does not grow naturally. In these places though, it could have been possible to cultivate Rocky Mountain bee plant in gardens. For example, there's a ruin called the Reeve Ruin just over the mountains from here, where archeologists found traces of Rocky Mountain bee plant pollen on the floor of rooms. This may indicate that they were cultivating it, but on the other hand, they may have also been carrying the material in from other areas where it was growing and therefore just dropped the pollen on the floor accidentally. But it does make you wonder if maybe everybody across the Southwest that was using organic paint was using Rocky Mountain bee plant. See, that's how things work. A lot of times it's just somebody that discovered organic paint discovered it using Rocky Mountain bee plant. So then as the recipe, as it were, was passed on from one group to another, part of that recipe was start with Rocky Mountain bee plant. That's what you make your paint from. So it is possible, although we really don't know at this point. Okay, several hours have gone past while this cooked down. I burned through this entire tank of propane. So at this point, the next step is to pull all the solids out so that it's just liquids and then cook that down until it's thick and paint-like. The problem, of course, is that it's super hot because it just finished cooking. So again, I have to go away, let this sit while it cools, and then I'll come back, I'll strain all the solids out and we'll cook it some more. Clint Swink covers the harvesting and processing of Rocky Mountain bee plant well in his book, Messages from the High Desert. Clint is a real scientist and he enjoys measuring things and keeping detailed records, which I'm not. But he says that the yield of paint from Rocky Mountain bee plant is about 2% of the green weight of the plants. I feel like the organic paint materials I prefer, mesquite beans and yucca fruit, have a higher yield than that, but I've never done the science to prove it. Here's an interesting fact I learned recently. Nine out of 10 dentists surveyed recommend the Ancient Potters Club for their patients who are looking to improve in primitive pottery skills. That's because the Ancient Potters Club gets together every Wednesday night to make pottery together. You can ask questions, you can hang out, you can get different people's opinions. It's a great way to learn and improve in your skills. So if you're curious about learning more about the Ancient Potters Club, I'll put the link to that on the screen and down in the doobly-doo, so go check that out. The famous Pueblo potter Maria Martinez, before she began making her black-on-black -black pottery, was well known for her beautiful polychrome pottery. And that polychrome pottery that Maria made, the black paint, was organic paint made from Rocky Mountain bee plant. Susan Peterson, in her great book, The Living Tradition of Maria Martinez, has this to say about Maria's use of Rocky Mountain bee plant. The rich black decorations and outlines on San Ildefonso polychromes come from a special pigment. The Indians make it from the Rocky Mountain bee plant, a wild spinach they call guaco. Large quantities of the young plants were gathered in July. After removal of the woody parts, they were boiled several times into a thick black residue. This syrup was poured into corn husks to harden, to keep indefinitely. When it was needed for painting a pottery design, a black cake of guaco was moistened with water. Okay, so last night I boiled this all the way down, so there's just a small amount of liquid in it, although it is still quite liquid, so it still has a ways to go before it becomes thick and paint-like. 
And this is where we get to the subject of yield again, as we discussed earlier. The last few times I've made organic pottery paint, I've filled this pot up with mesquite beans and boiled it down, and I usually get around 30 of these small containers full of paint out of it. Now, given the amount of liquid I have in there now, and the fact that it's still quite liquid, that is, it needs to be boiled down a lot more before it becomes thick, uh, I think I'm gonna get quite a bit less than that. I mean, maybe get five or 10 of these, I'm guessing at this point. So again, I think mesquite beans have a higher yield. On the other hand, I think a pot full of dry mesquite beans might weigh quite a bit more than a pot full of dry beeweed. And so we might be comparing apples to oranges here. The other thing I wanted to tell you is I'm on my third can of fuel. So the cost of fuel needs to be factored in when you consider what this paint is worth. Now, I think the cost of cooking it down is probably less if I do it in my kitchen on my stovetop, whether that's gas or electric. But with the smell of bee plant, I'm kind of forced to do it outside and use these propane canisters. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the liquid in this smaller pan now, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep boiling it down until it is thick, and then I'm gonna pour it into these containers, and we'll see just how much yield I can get out of it. Okay, for the final stretch of cooking down this paint, I use this little slow cooker. And the reason is if I'm doing that on a burner, it's real easy to burn this stuff. But in a slow cooker, you'd have to work really hard to burn it. I don't even know if it's possible. So it's really great to just put it in there and forget about it, go do other things. Now about when it's ready to pour out of there, uh, it's really hard to determine when it's thick enough that you want to pour it out. The trouble is, this stuff is really sticky. Yeah, that icky, sticky stuff is only fit for heffalumps and woozles. And the longer it cooks, the stickier and harder to deal with it becomes. I like to pour it out when it's still a little bit on the liquid side and it's a little easier to deal with. Because where I live is naturally dry most of the time, I can just leave those containers unlidded and they'll naturally just dry out. So that works really good for me. Uh, you may make different determinations based on your climate and your experiences. But uh, this stuff, like I said, when it's really sticky, it's very difficult to deal with. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I've got these little containers we talked about earlier, and I'm going to try at this point, if it's liquid enough, to pour that into the containers as best I can. And then at the end, I'll probably have to ladle some into it. All right, what did I predict I was gonna get? 10 or 15? Uh, I think I'm gonna get quite a bit less than that. I mean, maybe get five or 10 of these, I'm guessing. I think I got uh, 10 and a half, maybe close to 11. And you know, there's a little bit of a residue on here that if I probably worked at it, I might be able to fill another container, but um, it's a lot of work. Like I said, this stuff is at this stage really, really sticky and hard to work with. You know, I've got it on the spoon, I've got it on the spatula. Uh, I think at this stage, I'm just gonna clean it up and call it good. Definitely less yield than mesquite, but like I said, there's a weight difference. So um, I think if you were gonna actually try to figure out what the yield was on each of those, you'd wanna weigh it and then compare apples to apples, so to speak. Now, if you're interested in trying Rocky Mountain Bee Plant paint, I am gonna sell these on my website. Uh, you might wanna try harvesting your own. If you live out west, go out there in the summer and collect it. Uh, if you don't, uh, I'll put a link down in the doobly-doo to where you can purchase some seeds and try growing your own as well. Now this video is just about the paint and how to make the paint. If you're interested in how to use organic paint to make black designs on pottery, I have a video all about that. I'm gonna link that up right over here. So go check that out now and learn how to use this paint. I appreciate you coming with me today. I'll catch you next time.